Okay. And they're off. <laughs>
most of the time. Day one, encountered a game-breaking bug where the enemy won't commit Sudoku. Anyway, team building, oh my god. They consolidated the stats, made them all work, unlike the original. Made building each of the stats worthwhile enough, even if some can be suboptimal for your particular character and class choices. Kept the basic core of what made each of the original classes cool and useful. Gave each class a unique passive ability. Hands out little bonus abilities during the story that can potentially shore up weaknesses your character has. Has, eventually give you a fourth class for even more opportunities. It's all so cool. They gave Kevin Final Flash! This is the first time I've really wanted to dig into hard mode in a game. Find a guide, get hitbox data for fuck's sake, just to maximize my party. But... I'll talk about it later. Notably, the boss battles. What in the living fuck? Notably, the boss battles, which are all faithfully recreated, only with even more attacks and varied mechanics, do something similar to MMO raid battles, where you'll have to damage a moving target while dodging attacks, or break some objects channeling an extremely dangerous spell, and when you do, the boss will be open for a huge counterattack. I really like this direction, again, for complicating combat in an intuitive and interesting way, and for making text from the old game useful. See, in those days, most bosses launched counterattacks if you did a big move, sometimes outright killing you. So you were stuck using basic attacks or baby techs. But this game gives you a clear incentive to save your super moves for when you've earned a stun on a boss. This game's really good at making the player feel good, though the mechanics are all pretty samey. The world itself was carefully reconstructed. It's apparent in every screen, though only if you played the original. But seriously, when I first loaded into the demo and realized I could just run wild in a city I walked through in 2D, man, and it's cool, like someone recreating your first Pokemon game in Minecraft or something. And they really were meticulous about this, like almost every location at least tries to capture the original zone, even if some of the areas lose some of the charm of the originals with the updated palettes and redesigns. They sprinkled items everywhere and included this little bastard from Legend of Mana. He shows up all over the place and you gotta search the zones intimately to find him, but doing so grants some pretty crazy rewards, like half off the time it takes to flee in battle. Trials of Mana is establishes a strong player-environment relationship, even with some of the dungeon redesigns. I just wish they spiced up the platforming or went a little more crazy with the additions. It's cool of the developers to make it a horror game, too. <laughs> Now, I've heard and read a lot of complaints about the story, so here's the quick version. I skipped almost all of it because I know it already, and honestly, if you're playing Trials for its story, it's time to pick up a book. On top of that, if you don't like the voice work, you can swap the spoken language to Japanese, so take the moaning elsewhere. And it's not like the voices are the end of the world. Fucking, why don't you take a crack at I'm Shawit, famous beauty of Wendo. Go on. That isn't a voice actor problem, it's just the script. Men has always had heavy events, but it's the game where you're getting shot at of cannons to travel, swimming with this absolute unit. Even Kevin's most hated rival gets killed and reborn as a kung fu baby. If you're looking for serious, go ask David Cage in France. I'm sure he'll be able to furnish you with something suitably dull. No matter what, in the face of everything, this game strives to be a faithful remaster with upgraded elements. We're talking classes keeping the same abilities, somehow keeping the gold distribution and pacing nearly identical. It's crazy. Seriously, I love this game to death. Blew through it twice and I could do it again. The game has issues, though, and almost every single positive has drawbacks. I outlined in my recent Mana series videos that Mana had a bright future, kneecapped itself for no good f***ing <gasps> reason, and dug its own eyeballs out with a spoon. Mana went from a potential flagship franchise to a hard B, maybe a C, still popular in Japan, almost forgotten in the West. It's sickening. So it's hardly a surprise when a remake comes out like this, hits all the buttons for fans, and still gets loads of sh from newcomers because hey, game's low budget. Lol, who even are these voice actors? Have you seen these textures, bro? What are those? That stuff sucks to hear. I doubt if Square Enix is coming out with a game that looks like this, you know, apart from the model work, which is great, that the budget was anywhere near what games like the FF7 remake got. But then, that's a gaming landmark, and man, hasn't exactly made it easy for newcomers to play and like their games. Regardless of that, though, the game has some genuine issues, and I'm saying this as the game's, like, number two to four fan, probably. If you were gonna buy this game, close this video and go play it. I'm serious. Now, most of the issues are probably tied to budget, but some aren't. 
Let's gripe. I get that we're being faithful, but why keep the seed grind to get tier 3 classes? In my first run, it wasn't a problem. I got lucky and got what I needed with the early Benevidon dungeon seeds. But on my second playthrough, I got stuck with duplicates and couldn't upgrade one of my characters, rendering them stat-gated and almost completely useless for the first five hard mode Benevidons. That's so incredibly, unbearably stupid and completely fixable. You could have just put the old grinding spots in, but you took them out. And what's worse, enemies don't start dropping them with some regularity until level 50. And the earliest you can upgrade is 38. What the f*** <laughs> square? Give me a break! I'm mad! The new content is cool, at least the fourth tier of classes, especially because you can swap outfits if you hate what you get. But the extra dungeon is a joke. It's almost completely constructed of reused assets, or big, barren, flat, floating rocks. And it's long, but completely tedious. If you played Kevin or Charlotte's story, you're doing reused content in their final dungeon, then turning around and doing more. It's ridiculous. Just cut the sh and do a boss fight tighten the game. Otherwise, the new content gives closure to the stories if you were really invested, so I guess it's a net positive. I just don't really care. And I don't care because this game is so f***ing easy, it's almost insulting. Okay, two fights in the game can be somewhat difficult on hard mode if your team isn't amazing. The Black Rabbite and Two Minute Time Trial Annis, but that's two of about 20. I'm not that good, allegedly I suck at every game, so it's a bit disappointing that when I do get invested enough to play hard mode and New Game Plus, that they've entirely ignored adding any new boss mechanics and any kind of additional difficulty, like ways to take incremental damage more rapid attacks, more status effects to deal with, bigger hitboxes, anything outside of raw numbers. You'll probably die the same ways in easy mode as you would in hard mode, I checked. The game's idea of hard mode is one-shotting your characters occasionally. It's just a complete wash, dude. While we're on the topic of difficulty, I saw complaining in forums about the hard mode from some players, and while I don't sympathize entirely, it's clear that most of the complaints are about the AI. Let me break it down. Your AI friends regardless of any strategy stuff you play with, will either do suboptimal actions per minute for no good reason, awkwardly do even fewer actions per minute and act confused more regularly, or stand stock still in endgame boss battles doing absolutely nothing, standing in fire and dying. It's an insult. The AI was bad 25 years ago. Normally I'd gloss it, but when you're trying to handle the hardest content and your team you built from the ground up is worthless because of AI problems, it's infuriating. So anyway, pick Angela if you want to do solo endgame content. I mean, it's never been a super hard game. It's a game about chucking cups. Your friend died, chuck a cup. Your other friend died, chuck a cup. Just Throw it! Finally, classes and team building. You know, in the old days, people went on for pages and forum posts. Even to this day, people discuss the team building of the old game, which for the record is a game you can speed run without a full party and without tier three classes. It's easy. You don't need any kind of strategy to win. It's just fun to theorize about. This game was an opportunity to revamp team building, break the established tiers. And while in some cases, classes were brought in line with the overall power of others, the game in no way requires you hard mode or not to even think once about your team composition, except for the two hardest fights in the game. It's fun to put stats on your character, get the upgrades you want, really customize your party, even maximize your damage, but the game will never stop you from beating it. Never get aspirational or complex with the design. Like. Like, it'll never ask you to use your charge attacks on the boss's weak point. Reveal it. Hit it enough to stun the boss, but if you stand in the stone spray coming from the wound too long, you'll get petrified. It is absolutely the most basic kind of challenge. And all I can say is please, please, if you patch the game, make DLC, make a sequel, anything, because these systems are good. Please improve the ways players engage with the hardest challenges. I love this game. It's currently my favorite thing I've played in 2020, and I really want it to do well. And it probably wasn't gonna get the much needed love Square could have given it, because pumping tons of money into the mana IP would be a risky business move. But all I'm left with is an engaging and interesting microcosm, something my friends will never play or talk about, because this game isn't interested in bringing new people into mana, into wowing the audience. It's everything I need it to be but there's so much room to grow. If you're listening, Square, please, man. This IP could be legendary. <sighs> Hey, it's K-Bash. Special thanks goes out to my $4 patrons, whose names are on the screen. The show's on its way somewhere good, thanks to the community's generosity. 
And special thanks goes out to my extra generous patrons who are Errol, Aquari Wave, Azero, Bazcart, Boha, Caesar T, Chief, Color Crimson, Corgi the Lad, Crack Stuntman, Crusader Bear, Kyle Lapreed, Don't Worry About It, Dylan Coffee, Exa, Frankenstitch, Harkaj, Huey, Jason Lasky, Jaden, J. Deus, Joke Frog, Justin Sherry, Kelvin, Lady Cerebellum, Laundry Mom, Lego Sid, Mark Yulees, Max Gomez, Milky Moo Official, Neatsy, Ole Burgle, Horn Magnus Palson, Quillworth, Reggie Rodriguez, Salty Smasher, Seamus Nerd, Simp God, Super Sandwich Guy, Tom Crowick, Venom, Vic, Walter Taggart, Well Shit, Zachary V, Zane the Impure, Zane the Pure. If you'd like to help support the show and make it even better, check out my Patreon. We've got all kinds of goals and lots of rewards in store. Stay tuned for more. K-Bash out.